the Psalms of hope. My brother, we will talk about hope even further, and there's ten words that we're going to look at about hope. But one of them has to do with trust. When somebody would say, I trust in the Lord, it has to do also with my hope is in the Lord. My trust is in the Lord, my hope is in the Lord. And at the end of the day, why? Because He is our eternal hope, as we've said many times. Amen. 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 I want to use a very small example, as you know that example very well. That is, when we look at Egypt, when we look at the desert, when we look at Canaan, three facets in your life. That for different areas, you can be in different facets. There's an area in your emotions, or maybe with your finances, or maybe with hurts, that you find yourself in Egypt. Maybe God is working in you and you find yourself about relationships in a desert place. And in some areas maybe you think you're in Canaan, in some areas of certain breakthroughs that God gave you. But I want to give you a certain definition of, of these three facets today. First one is I want to call Canaan success. No, sorry, Egypt, we start there. I want to call Egypt success. And in that, what am I saying? My brother, my sister, there's a, there's a provision that you can have in Canaan. And there's a provision that you can have in Egypt. And I can confuse the two with one another. Because Egypt was from God in a time of famine. It was Joseph, yes. And through a wisdom that God gave him, at the end of the day he was sent to Egypt so that Egypt can be God's provision for his people. But it was in the success that they had. They had the best part of the land. They become successful. They multiplied to such an extent that Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they, were, got, they got intimidated. So there's a place where God will provide for you in a very miraculous way. But don't overstay your welcome. It's not the Canaan that God has for you. You stay in Egypt too long, your success will become your slavery. You can write there, success can become my slavery. And this success can enslave you, because in the past this worked and that worked, and you trust God in your business that certain things will work, but it doesn't work, it doesn't work out. Why? Because the season in Egypt is over. There's a Canaan as part of your destiny, not heaven, Canaan. There will not be Canaanites in heaven that you will fight. There's a, there's a Canaan here on earth in your destiny that God has for you. But let's not put our hope for the day into the day when, one day when I'm in Canaan, one day when this happened. One day when I have this money. One day when I have that. One day when that. Be careful, your hope is not in Canaan. Don't curse your destiny. Your hope is in Christ. Your hope is in Christ today. The hope in Egypt, the hope in the desert, the hope in Canaan is the same amount of hope that you have. It's in the man Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. And if you can understand that, then your Egypt will not enslave you. Then your desert will not be your destruction. You can write that there. Egypt will be my slavery. Desert will be my destruction. And Canaan, I want to write, you to write there, will be my crisis. Canaan will be your crisis. If you don't understand what you're doing in the desert, and if you don't understand what you're doing in Egypt. But all three can be so intensely from God. So intensely from God. Egypt. Here these guys come, Joseph's there, and he's just, come, just come and have the best. 
give you the, all of the best parts of the land. We will provide for you. Egyptians, Pharaoh, everybody, they are there for the children of God. Egypt must be your slave. But if you don't understand the season of the provision in Egypt, it will enslave you. So either Egypt will be your slave to provide for you things they out in the world, things even from the heathens, things of even things that happen out there that will serve the purposes of God through your life if you stay accurately with God. But we can work hard so that at the end of the day there is provision in Egypt. And later it's getting harder. We think of all the, the troubles and tribulations, but it's because I'm overstaying my welcome in Egypt. And more and more you become enslaved in your work, in what you do. More and more you start to suffocate in what you do, because the season for that Egypt is over. You need to know, what is God saying to me? Where do I see? Oh, and they gave all the visions of Canaan. No, they saw God. They saw the mighty works of God. They saw what God did to the Egyptians. They saw the power of God manifest. Hello? And when they saw God, they had the guts to say, I will go with Moses. I will go with Moses. Hello? Pray that you will see God in your provision so that you can see when God is moving out of that place of provision to a next phase in your life. When God is moving out of that place of success where you can be very successful in Egypt before the success becomes a curse. Are you with me? So we need to understand the seasons, my brother. My sister, and that could be not just for your whole life, that could be for certain areas where there is a certain provision from the world into your life, where that area of your life is in Egypt, like I said. And some other areas you are in the desert. Now what I'm saying is success is, becomes my slavery or success will be my slave in situations. <laughs> Amen? Second one, desert will be my destruction or it will give me definition. Let's say desert will give destruction or definition for what is what God has for my life. So when God takes these guys out of this out of the slavery, He provided for them, they overstayed their welcome, they sat comfortable in the, all the provision that was given. They became enslaved in that place, start to suffocate under that godly provision. Not provision from hell, it was the provision from God, Egypt. But when he brought them out, like we said last week, he didn't tell them, here you are now, we are going to Canaan, catch the vision, be excited, Canaan that I promised from long ago, here is Canaan. No, he said, he brought the definition. He brought clarity. He said, I took you from there, but I brought you unto myself on eagle's wings. Exodus 19, hey? And then he said, yes, you are my priesthood, you are my special treasure. He gives definition so that they understand. Let me impart identity in you so that you can understand your destiny. If you don't allow God to impart identity in you, you will never understand your destiny. Is it not true that when you accept and receive your identity as a child, the first thing you knew is, I'm going to heaven with God. Not I'm skipping hell, but uh, I'm going to heaven because of the identity just brought this assurance in you. I'm a child of God. I will be forever with God. When that greatest miracle happened to you, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, identity in part, <laughs> destiny secure. But now for every area of your life, you need to establish your identity in the word so that your destiny will be clear. And a lot of that identity happens in the desert. 
where definition is given, alignment is given. It doesn't have to be 40 years. 40 years is because desert is becoming your distraction because you could not honor Christ and God as your hope, as the hope in your life. Desert, your distraction, or the definition. God takes them out, brings definition to them, give the ten principles, they will be under the curse of the law, or they see the heart of God in the law. Their choice. Then he takes them through the desert, and it doesn't matter what they go through, God's provision is there. Who, who experienced that in your life? Sometimes you feel you really went through the desert, but for some reason God's provision was just there. That's when you realize, Shh, what now? It was there. But that's now the time to decide. I will speak the moaning and the groaning, the moaning and the groaning, and with my words, I will bring the death in that place of the desert, in that place of the desert. Because we are still looking at the word hope, can you write four words for as acronyms of hope? H is here. O, obey. P, pray. And the last one I want to change from last year. Pray. And the last one, E, expect. Expect the best. If you understand how to hear correctly. And obey. Submit to what you've heard. And pray, position yourself before God accurately. The P, pray, position yourself accurately before God. You have a certain expectation. You hear the words of fear. You obey the words of fear. You will position yourself in fear. And you will expect what I fear will come over me. Uh, are you with me? You hear the negativity and the criticism and the issues. You will obey. You will, you will be under the everything of the crisis and all the situations. You will be submitted to that. You will pray just for all those stuff to change. But it won't happen because you're just praying for the little stuff. And you will expect at the end of the day what you heard, what you obeyed. What you focus on, your expectation will be, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm in the expectation here. Like I told you, all that negative stuff, like I told you, it happened just like that. You ever met somebody like that? Hopefully not yourself. <laughs> May God set us free. May God set us free. Hear the word of God. Hear the word of God. Faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. Faith that saves you, faith that overcomes the world, faith that brings you into his kingdom, faith that made you a child of God, faith and that way as a gift from God comes through hearing, hearing from the word of God. So hope, hope starts with hearing the word of God. I choose to hear the word of God. If I want I say, I don't feel, I, I experience, I, I'm hopeless. Okay, that's what you feel, that's not the truth. Truth, hope is living in you, is the heart of heaven, Jesus Christ, my eternal hope, living in my spirit, hey? You have a relationship with hope. Hope is not what I feel is gone and then it's up, then I have hope, then I don't have hope. You're talking about your emotional state. Like a baboon and a donkey can do. But as a human being, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, the one living in you, in your spirit, he is called hope. And you have a relationship with hope. Hope can speak to you. Yeah. And there is not less of Christ and more of Christ. And he is the fullness Amen. of who he is. Yeah. With all respect, you don't have the arm of Christ and then the leg of Christ. The fullness of God is living in you. Hope Amen. is called God. God to eternal hope. Amen. So what I must, I need to deal from that place, but hope in my spirit, it will never open up for me and I will follow my emotional state and 
what I decide. I have hope, I do not help. I feel this, I feel hopeless, I feel that. All over the place. No, have respect for him who is your eternal hope. Yeah. In there. Are you with me? Yeah. Your success will be your slavery or your slave. The, the desert will be your destruction. If what I speak, I speak. I hear what's happening, I can see. And at the end of the day, what I speak is hopeless. And I curse my own destiny. No, that is not what God has for me. The desert will be your destruction or the definition. Sometimes in the desert when you are fed up, when you get irritated, when you get angry, when you go through a lot of frustrations, be careful what you say. Be careful. Honor Him as the hope in you. Honor Him as the hope in you. Amen. It will bring definition. So that when you come to Canaan, if you brought definition to destiny, when you came, come to Canaan, your interpretation will be accurate of what's happening in Canaan. Because Canaan will be your crisis. You can write there, Canaan is my crisis, or Canaan is my comrade. Just for you to remember. My crisis or my comrades? Comrades for what? I thought many people they are running for Canaan, for the milk and the honey and the this and the that and all the stuff. But Canaan is supposed to be your comrade for your calling. Canaan must help you in your, your calling. It's not your destiny. Canaan is not your destiny. Too many times people will work, they will work till they die. And here at 60, 70 years old, they have enough so that they can leave something for their children and their children. I think that was life. They give their children a Canaan, but they never showed them how Canaan must be used. And that's how, how sometimes you find a father, he really worked hard and he's leaving his children this, let's say, 20 million. And then, Child just mess it all up. Why? Because he doesn't know what to do with Canaan. Yeah. He doesn't know Canaan is not my destiny. Canaan is a comrade for a destiny. Yeah. In Canaan, I am there. And in, if in that area of your life where God is taking me to Canaan so that his kingdom will come, yeah. his will will be done. They took possession of the land. It was their inheritance. They crossed the Jordan and they took even possession. possession but just around the corner, the heart is gone, not always God anymore. <laughs> gone. No, it's written down as examples for us, the word says, so that we can learn from that. So my brother, my sister, may your heart not be fixed for Canaan. Yes, we must have vision. Yes, we must trust God for things. But at the end of the day, it starts with my hope that is in Him, not my hope for Canaan. I don't have hope because Canaan is around the corner. I have hope because he is in my life. <laughs> but God wants to trust you with the Canaan. So that you come into a place. The world brought to you a provision, success in Egypt. You are sorting out your life, bringing definition of purposes and who God is in my life and his purposes, his desires for my life. So that when I come to Canaan, kind Canaan is not my crisis. But the guys who murmured the whole time, who murmured the whole time, they came to the Jordan and they saw one hell of a crisis. The nation, after all the murmuring, after all the focus on the memory and all the situations and all the circumstances. And you know, you can focus on that. You can have a very uh, amazing prayer life, bringing all the issues before the Lord, but actually you are just murmuring. Rather, you kept silent and didn't pray. Didn't pray the whole time. That type of prayer, focusing on all the issues. Yeah. Bring it before God because you are dependent on Him and you acknowledge Him as your hope. So many Psalms. David, it looks like he's in the absolute depression and all his circumstances is like some of that horrific. But at the end of the psalm he would say, my hope is in the Lord. 
He doesn't have the testimony. He doesn't have the proof in the circumstances that he saw. But he declares, he declares, my hope is in the Lord. Amen. The place where I find stability, the place where I understand trust is in him. I can only trust him. I cannot trust anything here. You're going through circumstances that's up and down, and you say, therefore I cannot trust him. No. When you're going through this, you declare, in the midst of this, the only one I can trust is him. Yeah. Unshakable hope. Yes. In here. Unshakable. In the core of who you are, there's something that's unshakable. And he's called Jesus Christ. The hope of glory. In you. Live from that place. Live from that place. Amen. Amen. There's a the distraction of the definition. Canaan, the crisis. Because now we have a crisis. Because we didn't find definition of who we are in the desert. We find out all our troubles. We, we voice out all our complaints and all our issues. And in the midst of all that, I come to Canaan where I must inherit. And I see a crisis. Those giants, they're going to slaughter us. Let's make the responsible decision. I'm taking my kids and we're going back to Egypt. The one that voiced the word of God, the one that voiced hope, kill them. Joshua, kill it. Silence the voice of hope in your life. Kill it with the murmuring. Kill it with the evaluation of all the giants. Kill it with the voice of, of giants. We are like, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. Remember, they said, we are like grasshoppers in the eyes of the giants. I don't know if the, if the, if the spies went to the giants and said, I'm looking like a what to you? You look like a grasshopper. <laughs> I don't think they went to them, but they gave a voice to those giants. You give a voice to your circumstances. You give a voice to the intimidation. They have no right to speak to you. Because Christ died for you, you were bought with a price, and the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Amen. Joshua Caleb said, no man, they are our food. Amen. They are our food, we're going to grow. They're not cannibals, but they said, oh, they are our food, these giants. Amen. We're going to grow through this, because they come with a hope. God has said, God has said, I heard, I hear, oh, I hear what God said. I will obey what he said. He said, he came in his house. My prayer, I'm positioned with God, not positioned with the giants. And he, I have an expectation that God will give us the land to hope. Joshua and Caleb, we will have, we will take the land. And God said, he came down and said, exactly what you said, according to your expectation, according to what you've heard about the giants, and how you will obey your circumstances, and position yourself in your circumstances, and have an expectation that we were brought out of, the out of Egypt to die in the desert. According to that hope, I will do, God said. And for 40 years, it happened what they believed, what they spoke, what they murmured about, what they said. There come a time that God still loves you, still loves you. You still will go to heaven. He will still provide for 40 years. He will still every day faithfully. God is faithful. He cannot be unfaithful. He will faithfully provide, but provide the quails, the manna, the water, the everything, the sandals that will not be destroyed. The cloud, the fire, faithfully every day. But you will not inherit the place and work with God that Canaan will become your comrade to bring down his kingdom. That his kingdom will be established through your life because you know how to work with the Canaan that God is giving you. A Canaan of milk and honey, a Canaan of major provision. 
I'm talking about provision even in prayer, provision in, in, the, in the character that you have, provision in the wisdom that is part of your life, provision in the leadership capacity that's in you, in the provision of your, your way of giving yourself by faith as you unto the Lord. Provision of how you can be such a lot of quality from heaven. Not just the goodies. Yes, if God wants to give you that, but so with that, in that, in that hundred million, it will be a comrade to establish the kingdom. Let's say comrade to establish the kingdom. I'm not now in politics, just you know with me. Your comrade to establish the kingdom is the Canaan. But only if you can sort out where is, but if you are busy in Egypt and working and trying to get back into business because the business was successful yesterday. Just stay in Egypt and die there. As a slave to a system. As a slave to a system because you couldn't understand. God help me to sort out my life. Even if you take me through the desert, but the desert will not destroy me, but desert will give definition. Who am I? Identity that calls for destiny. Identity, apricot, destiny, wow, apricot tree, amazing, eh? The identity here will bring forth the destiny. Bring definition to your identity. And you don't have to run for a destiny to try and figure out who you are. Figure out with the hope that is in you. Christ is saying, I am who? You are still here. Amen. Okay. So in that place, then when you come there, it's not a crisis. And parents say, we take our children. We have a crisis. We kill Caleb. We kill Joshua, we fire Moses, we go, take our children, make the responsible decision, and go back to Egypt. And so, 40 years they died. Canaan, because Canaan to them was a crisis. Canaan, and many Canaans in the past, she was a crisis in your life, in my life. And we missed out. One day we will see the movie. Of some stuff we already God wanted to give us so that we can work with that for His kingdom. Let's say, let, let's sort out our lives, man. Bring definition in here so that God can trust us with the king to be a comrade to establish His kingdom. Amen. Amen. And remember, Canaan is not just finances, like I said. It's a quality in you, it's a gold in you. Yeah. It's when James 1 says, uh, count it all joy when you fall in various trials. Count it all joy. You come to the forward and you have a testimony. I just want to testify that I'm full of joy because I have a lot of trials and tribulation. Thank you. Hey! <laughs> Don't sit and that was a testimony. Testimony is not just <laughs> when you got something. That's that's part, that's the thankfulness also in the testimony. But there's a testimony to count it all joy even when I fall into various trials, according to James chapter 1. <sighs> you with me? Yes. Don't, yeah. look, don't look so sad. Okay, count it all joy. Tell your, tell your neighbor, joy. joy. At least give him a fake smile. <laughs> okay. Come and build joy. Crisis in the calling? No, comrade in the calling. He's a comrade. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. On this Canaan, on this Canaan that you've given me as it is in heaven. You take the land, you take the land that God has given you as an inheritance. CEO of that company, work at that school. You're a teacher at the school. You're a teacher at the school, but you take the school. In the spirit, you take the school in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of your presence, that is your Canaan. That school is your Canaan, and you take it for God. God's kingdom will come, His will will be done Amen. in the school as it is in heaven, in this company and in this department as it is in heaven, in my business as it is in heaven. Amen. Why? 
because I understand Egypt, I understand the desert. How it will serve me, Egypt will serve me, desert will serve me, so that Canaan will also be a servant. And not be a crisis and a curse in my life. Amen. Are you here? Okay, so lastly, once again, hear, obey, pray, expect. Make sure what you hear, my brother, who you just find yourself among guys that are just negative, or guys or people that are compromising, guys that are faking. You know, this name is like this, and it's like that. You hear those words, you will obey what that spirit says. You will obey the criticism. You will obey according to your opinion that you the whole time you are hearing. You fill yourself with that. And the prayer that has to do with how you position yourself. I position myself in the negativity. I position myself in the depression. I position myself in the crisis. I position myself in my success instead of in Christ, my hope of glory. Amen. Your success cannot be the curse to enslave you. Yeah. Why are you with me? Yeah. Well, remember, we said it a few times already. When Israel, when they worshiped the golden calf, let's take all the things, all the goodies we have, and make ourselves golden calf. You won't believe it. Was it in the Commonwealth Games opening night? They had this golden calf. Everyone was like, <laughs> This other day, was it? This other day, yeah. That was the opening of the Commonwealth Games in the world. I don't know what they wanted to say. They must have a very clever reason for that, hey? This golden calf and then very freaky dressed, a lot of people that were in a circle, bowing down and doing dances, bowing down. Yeah, the devil cannot get something new. He can just copy. I know. He's not the creator. He doesn't have the source of creativity in him. Ah, hallelujah. May God give us wisdom. My, my brother, my sister, these guys, you can take all the valuable things that you have. And if you focus on the valuable stuff that you have, you are building your own golden God. When you focus on the crisis or the thing that must if I have this breakthrough and I have this money, if I have this way, if I have that, you are bowing before this golden calf. If I have, if I have. I know. And God says, you must go down and you must see what happens. What is happening there? Came down and threw down the Ten Commandments. He went up. But first there at the top, before he went down, he made an session for them. And he made intercession for the sake of the vision of Canaan. 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 God, you promised Canaan. Uh, please, please, forgive them for what they are doing there. They're down, down the mountain. Forgive them for what they are doing there. But remember your promises about Canaan. You can remind God about the promises. And then Moses came down and he saw what he did. And for some reason he realized I must go up again to do intercession. Why? 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 Because this time, he will not remind God about Canaan. He will not remind God about the vision. He will not remind God about the, the promises. He will go to God and say, God, forgive them, and if not, take my name from the book of life. You come in worse. He says, you're supposed to be the source. Yeah. You're supposed to be the everything. Yeah. God, they turned your back. Their back's on you. Yeah. That, reminding God about his promises, that was not intercession for what they've done, because they put their heart in their stuff. You need to come back into that place, hope, the being for prayer. Pray that your heart will stay aligned with Him, aligned with Him. But if you push for Canaan, if you push for Canaan, what did God say? Okay, I give you Canaan. I, the Lord, bless you. You can take Canaan, but I'm not coming with I'm not coming with. And then Moses said, God, then forgive. Forgive me, but uh, let's forget about Canaan. If you're not coming with, we're not going. He's bargaining with God. God, if, if, if you're not going with, there is no Canaan. 
there is no Canaan. You better go over the Jordan with the word of God. You better go over the Jordan with the word of God. Because those that didn't go with the word of God, they came back with a crisis, with the word of crisis. And to poison every man, every woman from all those tribes. To poison all of them so that the whole nation of God, that generation, had to die in the desert, except for from Caleb and Joshua. Hello, hello. You must have the word of God in you. The hope must be alive in you. The word from the hope that is in you must be alive in you before you cross the Jordan. Otherwise, Canaan will be your crisis so that you go back into this destruction place, the desert, until all of your life is destroyed and everything died and that there is no legacy for you further. Because who crossed the Jordan with the word of God? Canaan is not your hope. Don't give Canaan a voice. God is your hope. Give him the voice. Respect the voice of hope in you. Last example. So we have Mr. When we talked about this Egypt, that's God's provision. How will the world become your provision? The word says that it will be so. That the world will serve the purposes of God through the church. Hello, it will happen. The riches will come from out there into the church, but not with the prosperity teaching in foolishness, but for the man with wisdom that was a Joseph. A Joseph that when he had problems with his brothers, with his family, he didn't he had all these issues the whole time with the brothers with not forgiving and judging and bitterness and that and all those stuff. And we can stay for the rest of our lives like a Joseph in the issues with family and friends, the spiritual family. No, he went beyond that. And he was also faithful and he had the wisdom that protect his choices even when the temptation came and he was unfairly thrown in jail. That is now the time really, really, really to judge. This is really the time to have issues. This is really the time for bitterness and unforgiveness, resentment, and all the harm moss. But he had the wisdom by God's grace to keep the word of God in his heart. He had a hope, he had a hope, he had a hope. And jail couldn't take it from Issues with people couldn't take his hope. Issues in the situation could not take his hope. And so when he went from the jail to the palace, he didn't get hope. He came with all the hope in jail. And all the wisdom that he had already in jail. He just walked over and changed the aesthetic. Just changed the environment. Nothing changed here. And then palace didn't become the curse. The palace that God has for you to get out of that jail situation, out of that jail area in your life, He wants to bring you into the palace so that from the palace you will have an impact. From the palace you will have an impact. It's all for the sake of the nation. The palace God's giving you is only because He wants to provide for His nation. It's only for the Church of Christ. It's only because God is sending you into the palace for a purpose, not so that you have a palace and so there you sit in your palace. <sighs> Joseph, from the nice food in jail to the nice food in the palace. Okay, so may God help you. Palace will not be your curse. So that with a word of hope that is burning in you now and that is being given definition, the word of hope that you get because you get into this word and you hope will speak more. He's full out and fully alive in you, Christ. But he will have a bigger voice because you respect his voice and you choose to hear his word. Hear his word. Not hear first the other rabbis. Your ear is not supposed to be a dustbin. Not first to hear the rabbis, but understand your life is a temple, not a dustbin for the devil. Amen. Ah, we're we three. So don't believe all that other rubbish. And from that place, and from that place, you will have impact. 
And from the palace, there will be purpose. But you don't go into any palace without a purpose. Because that palace will be used by hell in your life. Even though given by God, there's palaces that God has for you in store. And we missed a few palaces already. But thank God for His grace that there's a second and a tenth and a hundredth second chance. I know. So that if you can have God's wisdom and learn the wisdom in that area where you feel suffocated, that you will learn God's wisdom, be faithful, and with that hope in Him, hope, everybody say hope in Him. Hope in Him. David says, my hope is in you, my hope is in you. It's written a hundred times in this word, the hope is in Him. Yeah. With that fullness of hope, in jail. With that fullness you come into the palace, and the palace doesn't become the curse, but from the palace as a platform. Oh, I like all the peas, it seems to me. The palace is a platform for the purpose. Hallelujah. <laughs> the palace is a platform for the purpose. You come with that wisdom in that place. And the wisdom will be for the purpose so that his kingdom will be established and that there will be provision for the nation of God in a time of famine. And when it's time to reckon with your brothers, like you know already, we said that a thousand times, when the time is aged to have the issue with the brothers, when the brothers came before Joseph, Genesis 50, 20, hey? You intended to harm me, but God and a plan for a nation to have food in a time of famine. Therefore, come here, my brothers. You are forgiven. I love you. And he opened up his arms for the ones that sold him. Threw him in a bit and lied to his father. He puts his father in misery for so many years. Oh, God, give me the grace. I hope God give you the grace that we will understand this. Become that type of man with purpose. Become that man of purpose. And I pray that for you, I bless you with that in myself. That our palaces that God has in store for us will be a place for purpose for His kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Father, for who you are. God, and I pray for every man and woman in this place. I pray that you understand that what you have for us. God, with every Egypt, thank you for your provision in Egypt, Lord. But help us not to overstay our welcome. Help us to understand when we need to move on in that with God, what you have for us. God, and help us also in the desert that we will not be destroyed. But God, that we will not murmur, we will not moan and groan and become bitter. God, but that we will be thankful for your awesome provision. Bring definition in the desert, Lord for every man and woman in this place, so that we understand and embrace our identity to find our destiny. God, that we don't have to run for destiny, we must just establish identity and destiny will automatically come. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for that. And I pray that Canaan, God forgive us where we saw the crisis of Canaan by looking at giants instead of looking at you, our hope, our eternal hope. We choose by your grace to start afresh today as we change our mindsets. We choose to come into your word, to hear your word, to obey your word, to pray according to your word, to expect according to your word the hope in us. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.